Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'd like to show you all my power brake bleeder that I built from very cheap available components from the hardware store and a couple of bits and pieces from eBay. It gives you a automotive brake power bleeder that uh, will last and last and last. I've been using this for a number of years and I've just had to make a couple of modifications to it because I'm building another uh, adapter for a different vehicle. So instead of the line being permanently connected to one fitting, I've decided to put a, a, a Nitto style air fitting on the hose so that I can change between fittings. This is the brake master cylinder reservoir fitting that I have been using. This is a, a board item. You can buy different adapters for different brake reservoirs uh, from speed shops and um, car parts stores, online, eBay, whatever. Originally, I didn't have the Nitto fitting in here. It was just connected in one line to, uh, to the garden sprayer. The reason I have decided to make a change to it is I'm in the process of building an adapter for another vehicle. Um, and this will be a universal type of adapter um, that I can use on multiple vehicles. Generally, the brake fluid reservoir is fixed quite well to the master cylinder. In that case, this style of adapter is used that just screws into the top of your brake fluid reservoir on the master cylinder and then allows you to pressurize that via the pressure sprayer which in this situation is just used as a pressure vessel and pump these are really really cheap from hardware stores in australia the our cheap hardware store is bunnings uh, in the us i understand it's harbour freight and, and other such places you probably have a hell of a lot more choices than we have here in australia this is just completely standard the only modifications to this is stuff that I have added on. I'll just zoom in up the top and give you a bit of a look. Okay, so what we have here, this is the outlet that normally goes to the spraying wand from the, uh, from the pressure sprayer. So all I've done is basically cut that and here I've mounted a, a brake line T fitting. Uh, and the reason I've used a brake line T fitting is it has a hole to be, to, to be able to mount it to a vehicle, you could use any type of T-fitting. This is 1 8 NPT, uh, standard kind of fluid connectors, and I've just bolted it through, same same area, just this slot that's on the other side. I think there's like a, a fabric handle or something that goes on there. That allows me to mount it. The tube from the wand goes into a, um, a 90 degree, it's probably a six mil hose barb that I've got screwed into the T fitting. And then I have a eight mil barb screwed into this side of it, which goes to our, our brake master cylinder by this tube. And I've just added a, a cheap pressure gauge that I bought on eBay. It goes up to 30 PSI, which is about the maximum kind of pressure you, you, that you'd want to put into this thing. The beauty of using the pressure sprayer bottles is they are designed for their purpose, which is a fairly low pressurized reservoir and they have a reasonably good pump in them. They also have a pressure relief valve mounted on them here. So if you over pressurize the bottle, it will blow off the relief valve. The relief valve is also very handy in this situation because you can use it to depressurize your brake master cylinder reservoir uh, between fluid changes. Unlike a lot of brake pressure bleeders, all we use this for is air. I know a lot of the store-bought items, you can put brake fluid in them, which will then, as you pressurize it, will then get pumped through into the brake master cylinder. You could actually do this with this unit as well because it does have a, a line that goes down from this point down to the bottom. But doing it that way is very messy because you end up with uh, a master cylinder that is always completely full above its 
um, above the point where the cap and everything sits on it because the line will be full of brake fluid um, it's just a real pain in the ass to use them that way i have used store-bought brake fluid pressure bleeding systems that work in exactly the same fashion as this they do everything in the same way they're just as messy i i i, I do not use fluid in them when i use them so using it as, a, as an air only pressurizing system works extremely well the only caveat is you have to be careful not to run the brake master cylinder reservoir empty. So when you are on one corner of the car releasing the bleed nipple on either the calipers or the brake drums, whatever type of brake system you're bleeding, you have to be careful that you keep an eye on the amount of fluid that you are removing and then go and check your master cylinder level to make sure that you're not going to run it low because if you run it to the bottom you'll introduce air into the lines which is a real pain in the bum so the beauty of, of having the pressure relief valve on this is when you think you've got enough fluid through and you want to top up the master cylinder all you have to do is crack the pressure relief valve pull this up depressurize the system remove the cap or remove the plate depending on what sort of an adapter you have refill it with brake fluid repressurize it and go again so this is very easy to make very cheap and by simply using a cheap nitto airline quick disconnect and either buying or making up different adapters you can use this for all the vehicles that you have at home brake fluid on most vehicles is recommended to be changed every 40,000 k's so it's something that you really should be doing often and you very often find that people just simply if they're servicing the, their cars themselves they, they just simply don't do it so a lot of vehicles are running around with really old brake fluid in them just because of how much of a pain in the bum it is to replace the brake fluid honestly 15 minutes and you can replace the entire brake fluid in a motor vehicle uh, all done and dusted over the years i have used one of these vacuum brake bleeders uh, you can buy these anywhere, auto stores, eBay. They're really, really terrible. The problem with this type of setup is trying to draw fluid from vacuum and not forcing it with pressure is that the vacuum device attaches to the bleeding nipple on, for example, your brake caliper. Now, as soon as you crack the brake caliper uh, and start cranking on the handle and pulling a vacuum, Generally, air will leak down the threads of the brake bleeding nipple uh, as you are trying to crank it. So you basically lose probably two thirds of your, your vacuum power. And it really is just a lousy way to do it. These things, it's a thumbs down from Trevor. So your cheap pressure sprayer from the hardware store works really, really well. You honestly will have no problem with this. And if at some point your pressure sprayer carks it, the stuff that you've built here, you can put onto any pressure sprayer. All you have to do is cut through the hose that goes to the wand normally, put it into your fitting, you're good to go again. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm making up a universal adapter to suit a particular style of brake master cylinder. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the brake master cylinders um, have a screw on cap and for this for, for those you can generally buy a fitting here which you can still make your own but generally you can buy these reasonably cheap these type of brake fluid reservoirs are generally fixed to the brake master cylinder quite well and they can be pressurized via the lid with no problem the vehicle that i'm making this for the brake fluid reservoir is basically just sitting on top of the um, the brake master cylinder and it's just held on with o-rings and very little else so if you were to pressurize the brake fluid reservoir there's a good chance you would just force it hydraulically force it off the brake master cylinder and fluid would go everywhere and it would just be an absolute shit fight that is the reason why a lot of that style of master cylinder you cannot buy this sort of cap for it so if you have looked at these sort of adapters and this sort of a setup and you said, ah, oh, well, 
they don't want they don't make an adapter for my specific vehicle uh, there is a good chance that it has that type of reservoir that isn't meant to be pressurized via the top only there are universal adapters uh, made along the same lines of this that are available uh, they cost a few bucks i thought it'd be easier to build my own even though they are universal the ones that i've seen wouldn't particularly suit my situation this is just a piece of aluminium plate 100 mil 100 mil wide 12 mil thick i don't know maybe 180 mil long it was just an off cut and a lot of this stuff i've just built out of stuff that i've had hanging around uh, in the shed so um i'm almost at a point of having this uh finished i've just got a i've just dug out a uh what is it quarter mpt 10 mil hose barb that uh, and and tapped a hole in the top of this that'll go on there length of hose Nitto fitting on the end. And then she'll plug straight into, into the pressure sprayer. Just like this store-bought unit. So I'll show a little bit of footage of making this plate. And uh, then we'll go and have a look how it fits up and how it works. To make the seal for this adapter, I went hunting around the hardware store for a, a piece of rubber uh, that I can use to sandwich between this and the top of the brake master cylinder uh, to create the seal. And what I found was these guys here, these are toilet system mounting washers of some kind. Now they're, what they are is a silicon rubber washer, I guess. And they're quite thick. And they're absolutely perfect to uh, create a seal with in this situation here. So this is the brake master cylinder reservoir that I will be pressurizing as part of the bleeding process on this vehicle. Um, this is your brake master cylinder. This is the fluid reservoir, fluid inside as you can see, and this is the cap. You can see the cap on this particular vehicle. It doesn't screw on or have any any sort of teeth that hold it in position it's just a rubber cap that pushes down over the top and the reservoir itself isn't fixed into the master cylinder very well at all there are a couple of very small tabs but basically it just sits in on top with some o-rings holding it in position um, there really isn't a whole lot holding it on there if you were to just make a cap for the top of this that held on, held on somehow and then pressurize this there's a good chance it would actually blow off the top of the brake master cylinder the pressure that occurs in the vehicle's braking system actually only occurs below the reservoir it's it, it's generated from the force of your foot driving a piston inside here which puts pressure on the fluid that's in these lines which then run to your abs unit um, and your you know your brakes etc so Generally, there's not a lot of pressure in here. These units can take this kind of pressure that we'll be using to bleed the system. I've never seen one rupture at all. Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd give you a bit of background as to why I'm making the style of cap for it that I am, instead of using a cap like this. Firstly, you can't actually buy one that fits this, and I would suggest that it's probably for that reason. Firstly, there are no tabs to lock anything like this on. 
Um, and secondly, if a manufacturer was to make something like this and you did pressurize it and then hydraulically lifted the brake master cylinder off, it would be a massive shit fight. So, as I said, there are, a, there are universal tops similar to the thing that I'm making uh, that will perform the same function, uh, but you have to buy them. And I'd rather make stuff than buy stuff any day of the week. The store-bought universal caps um, to the... I had quite a look at this and, and I didn't think any of the universal caps that I, that I could see would have actually fitted this properly at all. So you can see how this is going to, to fit on here. The silicon rubber toilet washer from the hardware store will go over the top of the cap. Our plate will then sit on the top. And the plate will be sandwiched down and around the master cylinder and be held by the bottom of the master cylinder up to the top. So the whole unit will be sandwiched together to stop it lifting off. And how I plan to hold this whole unit together is with some eye bolts and a cheap cam lock strap. So this is the unit now held in position. The, uh, the silicon washer is now sandwiched between the top plate and the master cylinder fluid reservoir. The strap is just run from this eye bolt under the master cylinder through the other eye bolt. Get it as tight as you can. Just pull up on these, uh, these eye bolts and then just use a spanner to crank them up as long as you've got it balanced as well as you can uh, on the top of the master cylinder which is why there are so many holes so because often it's like this it's very congested around the master cylinder and you may need to put you know holes diagonally facing each other uh, put your mouse diagonally facing each other so that you'll get uh, it to seal quite well so it doesn't kind of flip up on one side so what I'll do now is just Nip these up to a point where they're not ridiculously tight. All we want to do is, is clamp it down enough that we have a seal. So basically what I'll do is now hook it up to the pump. And if we're making pressure, then I don't actually need to tighten it down anymore because basically all we need is pressure. And I'll just pump the pump and see if I get any pressure. So this is the pump here that's uh, hooked directly up to the unit. You can see we have a quite easily maintain a pressure of above 15 psi there. That's plenty of pressure to carry out this process. Um, so. What we do now that the uh, brake master cylinder is pressurized, we can then go to any corner of the vehicle, release the bleed nipple, and fluid will be forced through by the pressure um, in there until it gets to a point where there's not enough pressure. So basically, you just monitor your fluid that you're pulling out and the pressure that's driving it out. So if the fluid stops coming out before you think you've anywhere near used all the fluid in here you just nip the bleeding nipple back up come around either repressurize or refill and move into the next area you'll be surprised how quickly this will force brake fluid through your motor vehicles braking system and give you a nice clean fluid with minimal fuss so here we go folks quick demo of the unit in action you can see we're hooked up to the brake fluid reservoir up the top Nice and snug. You can see the toilet washer underneath. The pressure sprayer is sitting down here on the floor. This has got pressure. And I'm just working on the front corner of this vehicle here. So I will just 
angle the bottle towards me slightly so I can watch the gauge and we'll head over and bleed this brake caliper. So here we are, I'm just using a bottle with a hose on it. You can use anything, you can just get it like an old soft drink bottle, drill a hole in the lid, put a bit of hose down through the top and all you need is a hose that fits snugly on the, uh, on the brake bleeding nipple. Spanner goes on, hose goes on, just hang on to the bottle, crack the bleeding nipple and you can see it is that simple. Trying to do everything a little bit awkwardly here because I am filming, which sucks a little bit. But you can see the, the bottle's filling up. And whenever you think you've got enough fluid through or the fluid's clean, it's just simply a matter of nipping up the bleeding nipple put your vessel lower than the bleeding nipple when you remove the remove the hose so it'll suck down into the vessel take the hose off and that's it in a matter of seconds we've got uh, quite a substantial amount of brake fluid through the system a total one person operation no need to get people to pump the brakes and hold it down and all that kind of crap. Uh, no frigging around with a useless vacuum pump that just really doesn't work. Uh, it's just literally that fast. So you just work your way around the vehicle. You generally start from the longest line, one of the back corners, bleed the rear out until you get nice clean fluid, moving to the front, do either side. Once you've got nice clean fluid everywhere. So you can see after that operation, we still have pressure in the vessel there we could move on to an with that amount of pressure we could move on to another wheel that was my last wheel to do on this vehicle you can see the brake master cylinder is below the minimum point your minimum point there is only a guide for uh, while you're driving the vehicle as long as there's no way that uh, you're below any outlets which it's all down in here as long as you're not low past that point you should be pretty good to go generally I syringe out the brake master cylinder uh, to get rid of the as much of the old fluid as I can just using an old medical syringe or a, a you know anything that's going to create suction to pull fluid out I think there are syringes that you can use for garden chemicals and whatnot syringe out as much as the dirty fluid as you can so that the master cylinder is almost empty not completely empty and refill it with clean fluid that way you you know you're pulling clean fluid in right from the very beginning uh, so you can see the adapter that I made up there is quite successful in this situation. Now that this vehicle's done, I'll, I'll keep it. This is one of my own vehicles, and um, I may have another vehicle or two that may need this same type of bracket. I do maintain all the vehicles for most of my family members. I have three sons, and uh, of course, Dad looks after all their cars for them. Everyone needs brake fluid changes. So if you're in a situation like that, there's absolutely no reason why you can't make up such a simple cheap device to uh, maintain the brake fluid in all of your vehicles and keep everyone nice and safe. To be able to build something yourself out of cheaply available items at the hardware that does exactly what the store-bought unit does for a fraction of the cost, in my books, that's a thumbs up from the Aussie Shed. So I hope my shed built cheap ass brake pressure bleeder brake power bleeder whatever you'd like to call it i hope it's something that you guys can relate to super cheap easy to build you could do this in many ways as long as you follow the same principles the hose use whatever you've got around the fittings use whatever you've got around as long as you match your fittings to your hose this piece of plate could be a piece of steel could be a piece of aluminium it has to have however be something strong enough that can hold up to the forces of being pulled down from the signs across the top of this without leaking. Uh, the pump, any cheap garden spray will do the job. I advise you to get a gauge just so that you know where you're at with your pressure. Uh, all you need is 10 to 15 psi, that's plenty to perform this task. And as you see, 15 psi on the gauge on the pressure sprayer 
Um, really easy to achieve. There's not a whole heap of force down on these nuts. There's not a whole heap of force on this. That silicon toilet washer is doing a really good job. That was like two bucks at the hardware store. All just cheap, cheapest crap strap I could find. It was two bar, two or three bucks. You know, just all cheap, easy available stuff. It's what it's all about. Use your money to enjoy yourself. Once again, thumbs up from the Aussie Shed. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like my content. I'll catch you on the next one.